So Amazon has already given us a head-scratching, messing-with-time show in outer range, but they're not done with the deep dive into quiet sci-fi. Night Sky is now arriving, and thankfully, we can binge it all at once. But should you? Spanning space and time, Night Sky follows Irene and Franklin York, a couple who, years ago, discovered a chamber buried in their backyard which inexplicably leads to a strange, deserted planet. They've carefully guarded their secret ever since, but when an enigmatic young man enters their lives, the York's quiet existence is quickly upended, and the mystifying chamber they thought they knew so well turns out to be much more than they could have ever imagined. This is a slower burn type of science fiction story, but luckily we have two huge powerhouses of talent driving the narrative. Sissy Spacek and J.K. Simmons star as Irene and Franklin, and they are outstanding together. I mean, their chemistry is convincing, and it's very dynamic. There's a real sense of a lasting relationship between the two, where they don't always agree or even get along, but there's this deep sense of love, concern, and respect that they share for each other. This sets the baseline for everything that will follow. The entire story centers around family, even though it takes us off in different directions that sometimes don't feel very family-centric. We're introduced to the portal thingy in the backyard within something like the first 10 minutes of the first episode. Now, Irene says she wants to go look at the stars. Who do they? The visuals are beautiful, but they're not always perfect, and this becomes especially true towards the end of the series where the landscapes appear less impressive, but not to a degree that it harms the narrative. Now, I mentioned that the story is a slow burn, and while it doesn't drag, it may require some patience to bench. We follow some of the day-to-day -day issues that Irene and Franklin face, but when a stranger named Jude enters their life, things begin to get a little wonky. Now, I love the character of Jude because he's quiet and naive. Chai Hansen stars as Jude, and he convincingly creates a sympathetic man who's damaged and searching for something. His interactions with the York help to create a lot of varying tension for the story, too. Irene interacts with Jude in one way, while Franklin has a very different dynamic with him. And sometimes these are awkwardly nervous, creating just a sense of discomfort that's not overtly defined, but it's certainly recognizable and sometimes palpable. The story does introduce another storyline where we follow a mom and her daughter in Argentina. Now, while there's not nearly as much background information given or development on these two, we do begin to get an understanding of who they are. Their full purpose is teased out slowly through the show, which I'm glad for because the info is unveiled in efficient ways to really just increase the tension and the suspense throughout. If you ever saw the series Longmire, there was a deputy on that show named Ferg. Now, the actor who plays Ferg, Adam Bartley, he stars in this also as the York's neighbor Byron. I love the antagonistic relationship between Franklin and Byron. Now, Franklin is just this grumpy old man who doesn't like Byron, and there's no good reason given other than the fact that just Franklin has a fad feeling about him. Their dynamic is so fun to watch, and it's often pretty funny. But I also love that we get to see growth in their relationship, where they're not always fully antagonistic. Now, there is still a fair amount of disdain present, but sometimes we get to see moments where they're not fully mean to each other. Throughout this show, there is this central storyline of family that plays out, and we see it in many different forms and story arcs, each focusing on different aspects within relationships. And family is a major driver for the motivations of several different characters, and I really enjoyed how these are represented, just because they work to provide some very rich character arcs. Now, to avoid spoilers, I'm going to stay away from most of the specifics within this, but just about everything that happens within this show can be traced back to a family dynamic. The show also tackles different topics and emotions relating to familial relationships, and a few of them are very moving and impactful. Now, because Franklin and Irene are aging, the show uses this to make them unreliable narrators at times. But the story elements also set the characters up to be this way. I mean, even though they may have all of their faculties, they're elderly and a bit forgetful, which then makes those around them doubt what they say. And typically, that's because some of their claims are a bit odd. Now, this provides the impetus for some very frustrating situations, not only for them, but for us who are rooting for them. I love J.K. Simmons in this because his dry and subtle humor, it just gets to peek out in ways that I found really funny, but they're not huge or showy. Now, there's just one point where after seeing something, he's just like, well, that's new. And no, the words aren't necessarily funny, but it's all in his delivery. I also really enjoy how the show infuses small nods to other odd shows. Now, there are a couple of quick lines of dialogue that give shout outs to Twin Peaks, but they're so small and fast that it could be easy to miss them. The show is eight episodes long, with each of them being around 50-ish minutes. And because of how the storytelling plays out, I found myself constantly wanting to watch the next episode. The story is compelling and even a little exciting, and there are some times when the intensity and the pace of the show ramp up, but it's always balanced with more patient moments to give a great overall feel to the pacing. 
for part of this show, I didn't really know where it was headed or even what the purpose was. And then even by the end, there is one area of the story that I think is lacking in its information. Now, I understand what is going on with certain characters, but the whole reason why it isn't fully developed or even revealed. So it's like we have all of this buildup and tension surrounding certain players, but their motivations are mostly vague and ill-defined. Now, for me, that's probably the weakest aspect of the entire show. And while it didn't make the story unenjoyable in any way, I do worry if the story is fully fleshed out to have a complete arc from start to finish, even if they do take a few seasons to tell the whole story. But even with that shortcoming, we still do get some payoffs within the narrative. And the story unveils some elements which continued to invest me, but they also frustrated me when the season ended. I'm like, uh, you can't end there, what the heck? Now, luckily, it's not a huge cliffhanger, but in a way, it also is, because there are so many questions that I have to sit with until a second season is released. So overall, Night Sky is a quieter character study, focusing on family relationships and dynamics, using the theme of longing to drive the story. The sci-fi elements are constantly present, and they're very intriguing, but they also work to enhance the familial angles. The pacing is patient, but not dragging or slow. And while we have a great cast, Sissy Spacek and J.K. Simmons absolutely steal the entire show with their rock-solid performances as an aging married couple. The visuals are executed well for almost all of the show, save for some landscapes that were a little lacking. Now, I love the direction the story is taking, and I found it to be very engaging, even though one aspect of the story is mostly vague and ill-defined. Now, if you're looking for another sci-fi-ish series to binge, you may want to give this one a go. And thankfully, it drops all at once, so you can binge at your convenience rather than waiting each week for a new episode. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give season one of Night Sky four out of five couches. What's a show that you're currently binging? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.